towns in the whole wide world. I love the buzz of a tattoo gun. Maybe not the pain that comes with it, but the lifelong art and connection to myself and my stories is well worth the momentary ouch. Yet this love is something I've never gone all loud and proud about, at least not until today. <laughs> my family, my grandpa Boompa in particular, always said that only yahoos and degenerates get tattoos. <laughs> Boompa was a Navy guy from back in the World War II days, and many of his fellow sailors found themselves stuck with ugly blobs of tattoos after a drunken dare during shore leave. He was proud of not falling in with that group. Boompa told me that getting a tattoo would poison my body forever and ruin my life by narrowing my career choices. Whoops. I firmly towed this family line until I found my wildly rebellious voice as a 13-year-old. The Red Hot Chili Peppers album, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, was my angsty teenage music of choice. And I spent hours listening to their deeply profound songs and oogling over the album art. These guys were talented, famous, and rich, not at all impoverished idiots, and their tattoos were beautiful and artistic. I tried like the Dickens to get my parents to take me to a tattoo parlor so I could get one of my own, but they stood steadfast against my teenage hissy fits. And so I waited. And within a week of turning 18, I got what I believed at the time to be my only ever tattoo. I did try to placate my family by putting in a place that was easily hidden by a sock, but I still disappointed them, and it took Boompa a while to get over it. <laughs> uh, my orca represents so many of my hopes and dreams. As a child of the Salish Sea, I've always felt connected to the orcas, loved that the ladies of the pod ruled the roost, and dreamt of becoming a marine biologist so I could spend my life in the company of these beings. Other tattoos, like the orca, connect me to my hopes and dreams and offer me guidance in my decisions. One tattoo in particular I credit with helping to save my life. In my mid-20s, I was in a pretty bad space. An injury had left me unable to continue a job I loved as a commercial fisherman in Alaska. I was living with a verbally abusive man, stressed out beyond belief with my graduate school program, and trying to help my dad as he battled lung cancer. I was low and getting lower, so low that it was hard to find a reason to keep on keeping on. Around this same time, though, I started to get the itch for new ink. So with the last glimmers of hope that my heart could muster, I decided to cover my vulnerable wrist with the lotus, the sacred flower that blooms in rot, where I really felt I had been living, and the Sanskrit om, that deep guttural sound that calms and centers. Here's the thing, though. While this tattoo offered me hope and obliterated my suicidal tendencies, its meaning no longer connects me to that awful, horrible part of my life. It now reminds me of a more stunning time and some absolutely incredible people the sixth and seventh grade scientists I had the pleasure of learning with for a couple of years at Lang Langley Middle School. My sixth and seventh grade scientists were often pretty vivacious and really hard to mellow out. So I taught them that the lotus and the ohm were signals to shut up and just chill. <laughs> After that, all I had to do was raise my left fist to the, to the sky, bearing the tattoo, and I would get 30 squirrelies to stop Take a deep breath and just be. It was bliss. It was so bliss. Other tattoos connect me to my people in my world. My little purple fairies to my footloose and fancy free gypsies that I had the pleasure of traveling around Alaska with. My little symbol on my neck to my biological mother. I think my daddy would turn over in his proverbial grave for all the tattoos I have because of or in memory of him. Part of my dad's family is from Australia and a song that he sang to me as a child, and one that I hummed to him during our many hours in hospital rooms, was that of the laughing king of the old gum tree. So to remind myself to always keep the sweet song of laughter in my heart, even when times are tough, I tattooed the kookaburra, the gum tree king, on my shoulder, where he could always laugh in my ear. Towards the end of my dad's life, when the cancer hit his brain, there was a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, but also this incredible silliness my fresh tattoo came into being at this time. My dad had this thing with everything being fresh. And as soon as he took a single sip, sip from the most recently poured glass of water, he you would stop and his face would crinkle into this most beautiful, stupendous thing, pain-free, and he would demand a fresh glass. <laughs> he knew he was being ridiculous and he delighted in it. My fresh, in its own ridiculous way, brings back that joy and keeps the sadness of loss at bay. 
Shortly after my dad died, I moved to a place where I knew no one, but with nooks and crannies full of warm childhood memories of vacation spent with my dad here on Whidbey Island. My moth is for this place at that time. I have other tattoos that connect me to my places. The fern on my arm for New Zealand and, and Alaska, two of my most beloved worlds. My little northern pygmy owl for, again, this island and my Antarctic adventures. Sure, I have a tattoo or two that I may not be quite so fond of in years to come, but regret? Nope. How could I regret a tattoo of mine? A memory, in a memory of mine, a moment in time, a hope, a dream, a connection to a beloved. For me to regret a tattoo is not hold faith in my choices in my life, be them considered or just because. So like the red hot chili peppers, <laughs> I'll wear my art proudly, my stories for all to see, but few to know. Thank you. Thank you.